So for me, Rep Camps hasn't been great. Either they have poor quality video or lackluster features. Well, that all changed with the new Osbot Tiny 2 4K. This amazing webcam is very unique. And you know what? For the past three weeks, I've been using the Tiny 2 4K for my live streams and my podcasts, and it has been amazing. Great image quality, amazing software. But you know what? Let's dig a little deeper and let me give my thoughts about it. Sit back, relax, and get your popcorn ready and follow me on this journey. Let's go. What's up, guys? This is Eric back with another video. So what you're looking at right now, the image quality that you're looking at right now is the Osbot uh, Tiny 2 4K. And look at this image quality. It's absolutely amazing. But before I talk more about it, let's talk about the unboxing experience. First, looking at the box, you see the Tiny 2 in the front, and on the back, you see what's all in the box on the back. So opening up the box, you greet it to the Tiny 2 itself, along with an adjustable mount, a USB-C 3.0 cable, a USB-C to USB-A adapter, a storage case, user manual, and a warranty card. Now I do have the remote control that's not included in the box. This would cost you about $40, which is the way to go if you are doing something like a presentation. I will leave all the product links down in the description below. But the, as far as the price, this product has an introduction price of $299, but a regular price of $329. So the iSpot Tiny 2 4K is a smart webcam that has very good software, which I'm going to talk about in this video. You could do all kinds of things. You can, you can pan, you can tilt, you can have zoom functionality. You got hand gestures and voice gestures, right? Now with the hand gestures, you can auto tracking, you can do subject recognition. It's a powerful webcam here, and it's, you can use it for home videos like what I'm doing right now, uh, and it has the ability to follow you around all your movements. Now let's talk about the sensor. Now this has a CMOS 50 megapixel sensor in here with AI zoom in and all kinds of good stuff in here. You got HDR support, you got native do ISO support on here for low light. Uh, you have 10 times data transmission over USB 3.1. You got good sleep mode here, which is really nice. Uh, it's as far as the build quality, it's a metal and plastic design. It's small, it's lightweight. And now this unit is plug and play that works on all your streaming all your streaming services such as OBS, Stream, y'all, Ecamm Live, and more. But to get the use out of this unit, the software will come in handy. All right, guys. So here it is, right? I want to show you guys some of the unique features. Uh, of the Tiny 2 4K. Now I'm shooting this in 4K and one of the things that I really do like is the image quality itself. Now before I go over the menu and stuff like that, I wanna kinda show you guys some of the unique features, some of the things that you, that you can do to say if you was a, uh, a teacher or a professor or something like that. One of the things I like is once you stand up, it kinda follows you a little bit, right? Okay. And uh, as I'm standing up here, if I want to give a presentation, I'm able to do that. I got the full body in, in shot right here. And if I move around a little bit, it's going to follow me as it's following me right there. So that is really, really good here. Now, they, in the menu system, you can either use the remote or you could go into the menu system itself and you could make sure that you could get all your settings right. So I'm going to kind of go upper body and it's going to zoom in. And uh, now I got the upper body. And as you can see, it's, it's zooming in on the upper body of me and I can give a good presentation like that. Or I can do a close up 
right? So once I do close up, it's going to kind of target the face a little more. And again, this is going to be very good for people that want to do these type of things. Just say if I was shooting a YouTube video and I want to give a presentation and I'm kind of moving a little bit to the side, kind of go out a little bit, it's going to zoom in a little bit, which is really nice. So it kind of doing the facial tracking, which is really nice, right? And, uh, it, and you can... Uh, slow it down or make it faster as far as how you want it to zoom in and out and stuff like that. All right. So, but what if I wanted to go lower body? <laughs> so what it's going to do is it's got me on the lower body stand and uh, <laughs> go right there. Right. So that's the headless uh, feature right there. <laughs> so we could go back up a body. All right. So it's going to upper body right there. It's going to, again, attract the face. So this is a one of the unique features here. And I'm re actually recording with the software uh, that you can download on the, uh, on the app, you know, the, the website itself, which I will leave that link down in the description below. But let's go on and talk about the menu system here. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over the menu system. All right, guys. So here it is. Here is the menu here of uh, the Tiny 2 4K. Now this software will be available. Uh, I will leave those links down in the description below. But uh, you can actually see a very good image quality here and you can make all your adjustments and you can set presets. So let's go over it real quick, right? Here's going to be your main menu your console uh, with your presets right here. You got your zone tracking and stuff like that, which you can take it off and on. You got your motion. Uh, you do have normal tracking. One of the things that I was uh, showcasing earlier was the upper body, which it will kind of zoom in a little bit and I'll take it off a of zone tracking. It will zoom in a little bit and it kind of give you the more of the upper body. Now, if I do close up, it's going to focus on the face, right? Now, if I do headless, it's going to go down to the table, right? Which this may be very good if you had a table, if you want to showcase a product. It, uh, as you can see, I got the remote control here, which works very well. If I go lower body, it would kind of go down a little bit more. All right. Now, if I hit desk mode, it's going to go all the way down, which I have the camera way uh, over there on the side. So I don't want to hit that. Now, if I'm going to hit whiteboard, it's going to go uh, up like that. Well, let's go back here. Uh, go back to upper body. Let's go to upper body here. All right. So as you can see, it's going to upper body. But if I was doing something and I use a remote control, I can go to whiteboard and what it does is it, it uh, zoom out as I'm doing a presentation. Uh, so which is really good. Now I've got the hand mode, right? Uh, it's got my hands, right? So it, it, it'll follow my hand, which is really nice. This is very, very neat. So if I put it on hand mode, it will follow the hand again for a presentation, right? Uh, and if I do group, uh, let's see, go back up to upper body uh, and let it find a face. OK, uh, <laughs> it's really good here. Right. You go to group. So what that does is go zoom out if you have a group of people. And then it, again, since I'm the only one in the shot, what it's doing is it's kind of zooming in on me and I got it on standard. So this you can do tra uh, normal tracking and stuff like that. Or you could use the hand gesture, right? Let me let me get a part of it here. I'm kind of show you guys some of the hand gesture, right? If I put my hand up like this, it's blinking, all right? And boom, that's it. It won't move anymore. So that hand gesture uh, uh, tells the camera to stop moving. And I'm gonna show you that. Let's go to more, and it, it gives you the the. Uh, the features here of locking on the target, which I just did it right here. Now, if I uh, turn on zoom, if I kind of do something like that, it will zoom in, uh, do data zoom in and it got dynamic zoom and stuff like that. Now you do have voice control, right? And if I say these uh, voices here, it will do exactly what it needs to do. So let me, try to see if I could uh, uh, do one of them right here. Let's say I want to go to track me. Okay, there it goes. Now I just did it and now it's tracking me. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, so these are going to be your voice controls. So right now, uh, and you could put it up to 4K if, uh, if that works for you. And what you've been looking at throughout this entire video is, is in 4K. So just so you know. Uh, but let's go into image. Okay, it's in auto. Uh, exposure is auto. Now you could make all your adjustments accordingly if you want to. You could turn it off. You could turn uh, up the shutter speed, the ISO, white balance, and all that stuff like that. So I'm keeping on auto. Uh, and uh, so that's going to be your uh, image features. And when you go to beauty, now this is crazy. Now you do have, you know, native, classic, and man, if I click on one of them, kind of brighten me up a little bit. And uh, as you can start seeing, uh, once you do that, you start seeing a, this a little type of delay going on, right? If I go to classic, all right, now you start to see just a little jittery going on here. They got on man and right there. So let's turn it off. As you can see, it does do it smooth. Now, one of the things that really bogs this uh, system down is when you put background blur on. So once I put background blur on, as you can tell, the delay really start hitting hard. Now, if I go very intense on the background, all right, go really intense on the background, all right? So once I go very intense on the background, uh, yes, now you start to see that it is starting to kick in a little bit as far as the delay. So just be advised that when you, if you're gonna use it like this, uh, that you will have just a little tab of delay uh, on it. So let's go back and let's get out of here. Okay, so as you can see, back to smoothness, right? All right, and again, I went to more already. Uh, you got your hand gestures and stuff like that. You got sleeping background and all that good stuff, right? Uh, now, if I click this, it's going to turn it off. Now, if you click here, that's going to give you your, your global keys, which I'm going to go into the menu in a second. And here's going to be your virtual um, camera, right? So uh, you're going to go through your virtual camera uh, here and your OSC. But when you go to menu, you got your hot keys. Right, uh, you got your remote control, which you need to turn on. Uh, if you got the remote control, you can turn that on. Uh, you could do laser close up. So if I click on the laser, uh, it's gonna do a close up uh, here on the remote control. So that works great uh, as far as that. All right, so get out of that. Uh, hit the X. All right, so uh, we went through the console, right? You can add presets. You got all your modes here. Actually, you can use the gimbal. Uh, to kind of move manually, you could do that. You could go wide shot, medium, narrow. You could reset if you want uh, and uh, go from there. I'm gonna go back to upper body. Okay, kind of set it up just like that uh, and go from there. So this is the menu settings of the, uh, of the Tiny 2 4K. That's what I'm talking about. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons, or I would say pros and opportunities. First, let's talk about the pros. I absolutely love the image quality that's coming from this camera. 4K 30 frames per second is absolutely great. So I really do like it. Plus you have the option to set your white balance and ISO, which is really nice. Next, the tracking feature or AI features on here is really good. Now, when you put it on auto, you do get a bit of focus breeding, but overall it's great. Right. And lastly, the hand gestures is really good. Plus you got voice commands. That also is really good. So that's some of the pros, but let's talk about the cons or I would say opportunities. First, when you're recording with the native camera app here, it's an MKV file that need to be converted to MP4 before viewing it. Also, uh, you would have to use software like VLC to convert it, which is free, no big deal. But it's something you need to know. You need to convert the file, especially if you, I was using it in my uh, uh, video editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro. It needs to be converted uh, through a VLC before you put it in Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve. So if you're gonna use this for editing your videos, just so you know, you have to convert it into MP4 files. 
next. There's a little bit of focus breeding sometimes uh, with the webcam because it works so hard to try to keep track of the face. Sometimes it will go in and out to make sure that it got your face in focus. So maybe a software update can fix that, but it does do some kind of in and out sometimes when you put it on auto mode. I'm sure there's a fix for that. And lastly, when you put it in like uh, heavy features like blur mode, you will get a bit delay and some choppiness uh, when you put it in some of the extra modes here using the software. I'm sure that's, you know, software updates will fix that. So that's my pros and cons. So here it is, the all new 2023 Tiny2 4K. This is a great webcam that has very good image quality, very good tracking, very good hand gestures, very good voice controls and stuff like that. I will leave all product links down in the description below. This is Hector Tech Preacher. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about the Tiny2 4K in all its glory. See you guys on the next video. Peace.